I'm Ian from Wing Leader and I've been looking for bits of aeroplane since 1978. Let me show you some interesting things from in the shed. Today's shed secret is this joystick off a B-17 Flying Fortress. It's the grandfather of fly-by-wire and it also makes a great noise. When you strap yourself into the pilot seat of a flying fortress, the first thing you'll see is this great big control wheel. It's got to be big because it's connected by wires to the control surfaces right out on the edges 50 feet away. Five hours pushing and pulling on them all the way to Germany was far from easy, but good old American technology had found a way to improve things for the pilot. The bomb aimer down the front used the very clever and very secret Norden bomb site to drop his bombs into Nazi pickle barrels. For the last part of the bomb run, he was actually controlling the plane through the bomb site whilst he looked through it, twiddling knobs for left or right, flying the plane through the autopilot, and that left the captain practically hands free. If you ask most enthusiasts, such as myself, what this grips off, they'd sagely tell you it's off a Mustang or certainly a single seat American fighter. It's got a trigger for guns, daka daka, and a button for bombs. Boom. In fact, it's for flying a Liberator, or B-17, one-handed, with a maximum of ease, and whilst possibly smoking a fag. This is a formation stick, as it says on the label, and it allowed the pilot to fly the aircraft gently just by sort of nudging it around, but while still being on autopilot and not having to take full control. It lived on the pilot's left side and the co-pilot's right side, down the edge of the cockpit, pretty much out of sight. It took away the physical effort of the really long sections of the flight forming up over England, setting off over the coast, and then flying over to Germany. I'm sure as you got closer to the coast of occupied Europe and the flak started popping, you'd have both hands back on the big wheel pretty much straight away. This is only the top bit of the control and the electrical box. It's the same grip as a fighter, but the trigger was for radio communications, and the button decided who was actually flying the plane, pilot or co-pilot. It only needed little movements. It sent electrical signals to the main autopilot control box and that then told servo motors to pull the wires and save you the trouble. Simple, sort of. If on a very dull afternoon you were compiling a list of the similarities between a B-17 and an F-16, fly-by-wire probably wouldn't be high on the list. But when you look at the whole stick arrangement, mounted on a stalk on the side of the cockpit, it's got just the same little wrist rest as you'd get on an F-16 cockpit, and it's doing just the same, sending an electrical signal to move the control surfaces to make the aeroplane fly where you want it. And here's the same arrangement on an F-16. You've got a joystick, you've got the box it goes to with all the electrical gubbins in it, and you've got something to rest your arm on for long flights. And it does make a great robot noise, left and right, very attractive, but forward and backwards. Oh, that really is the, uh, the business, isn't it? Potentiometers or something grinding inside. But let's pop the top off and have a look. A couple of nice quick release fasteners. A one and a two. The lid comes off. And inside, what have we got? It's just a long resistor there for forwards and backwards. Hiding inside, there's another one for left and right. And then just big springs to bring them back. It's not looking bad for 80 years old though, is it? I told you it was a good noise, although not your traditional sound of freedom. So there's a bit of World War II technology you don't see very often, always hidden out of the way, and the forerunner of modern fly-by-wire. <laughs>